taken to skilled training centers. Now safely home, enjoying the peace and tranquility the Gambia is known for. But if anything, Samba regrets embarking on the trip in the first place, although his wish was to go to Europe and make some money. I thank His Excellency for his great job, and I'm trying to warn or advise all those people who are sending the wrong message outside the Gambia or inside the Gambia here, who are spreading the wrong news. Gambia is a beautiful country. Gambia is a very beautiful country. If we stay here, we work hard, we'll achieve something. If you want to travel to Europe, we should go legally, not illegally. We should go legally, not illegally. I regret everything that I have experienced in this way. It was a horrible experience. It was not a beautiful experience. It was a very horrible experience. Samba is lucky to make it back home and recount his ordeal. But numerous others have perished, leaving their families in suspense at best. Hundreds, according to Samba, are also stranded in places like Agades and Tripoli after paying monies to people smugglers, whilst a substantial number are also said to be behind bars, not knowing when, if ever, they will see their friends and loved ones. Samuel Bach, GRTS. What a touching story there by Samba, reaccounting his ordeal. All time now to take our first break. The news continues momentarily. U.S. Defense Secretary Robert Gates claims that President Barack Obama had lost faith in his policy on the war in Afghanistan. And the president is not the only one singled out in this criticism. CNN reports that the book is already weighing in Washington. Book titled Duty, Memories of a Secretary at War, the former Defense Secretary delivers an unfiltered, sometimes scathing critique of the White House. On Afghanistan, the New York Times and Washington Post report, Gates writes that by early 2010, he had concluded the president, quote, doesn't believe in his own strategy and doesn't consider the war to be his. For him, it's all about getting out. The papers report that Gates, who served under both Presidents Bush and Obama, grew concerned about the president changing course, and that the president was, quote, skeptical, if not outright convinced, it would fail. Though Gates also says he, quote, never doubted Obama's support for the troops, only his support for their mission. The book is not set for release until January 14th, but late today, both papers published detailed stories about its content. Gates is especially hard on Obama's advisors, the papers report, calling Vice President Joe Biden, quote, a man of integrity, but arguing, quote, he has been wrong on nearly every major foreign policy and national security issue over the past four decades. At times, Gates is more flattering of Obama, praising him for making decisions, quote, opposed by his political advisors or that would be unpopular with his fellow Democrats. That's something Gates hinted applied to the president's war-making decisions to CNN's John King in 2012. And I think the reality is that there is an acknowledgement on people's part around the world that this president is willing to use military force uh, when, when our needs require it. And he calls the president's decision to launch the raid that killed Osama bin Laden, despite Gates' own doubts, quote, one of the most courageous decisions I had ever witnessed in the White House. On his former colleague Hillary Clinton, Gates makes a potentially damaging charge to a 2016 presidential run, saying, quote, Hillary told the president that her opposition to the 2007 surge in Iraq had been political because she was facing Obama in the Iowa primary. The White House has now responded to some of the comments in the book, a spokesperson for the National Security Council saying, quote, the president welcomes differences of view among his national security team and wishes Secretary Gates well. However, the White House does push back hard on the strong criticism of Vice President Biden saying the president relies on his good counsel every day. Jim Shudo, CNN, Washington. Civilians caught up in the fighting between the different factions in the Central African Republic are fleeing for their lives. The landlocked country used to be the adopted home of many Africans, especially those from West Africa. Now efforts have been made to repatriate them to their countries of origin. Let's look at this CFI report for more on that. Personal items in bundles and bags and a lot of patience. These displaced people have taken refuge at the Senegalese embassy in Bangui. 
It's from here that they are hoping to go back home to Mali. I'm of Malian nationality. I was born here. I grew up here. And now they are chasing us out. Inter-ethnic violence ravaging Bangui is forcing these West Africans to go back to their home countries. It's the only way they'll be safe. As soon as our first countrymen arrive on Malian soil, they will be entirely taken care of. Once they cross into the airport zone, they start thinking about the future. We were scared, but when calm returns, we'll come back, and we are praying for happiness to return. The 500 to 3,000 Malians living in the Central African Republic are all trying to get back through Dakar. Same thing for these Guineans happy to have escaped the chaos, those from Niger as well. In the neighborhood of Bungi, they killed all the Muslims that they came across. They strangled some, throw boiling water on others, some even saw their limbs cut off. Same scenario here in Lagos, where 1,500 Nigerians have already arrived. Tens of thousands of foreigners have now fled Bungi for Chad, Cameroon, DR Congo, and all of West Africa. Uh, Turkey's Turkish government on Tuesday sacked 360 police officers accused of abusing public office and the youngest daughter of Spain's King Juan Carlos faces the risk of going to jail if found guilty of embezzling public funds. For more on these and other stories we go with this roundup of news. The judge has summoned the youngest daughter of King Juan Carlos, Santa Cristina, for questioning as part of corruption allegations against her husband. Infanta Cristina is now a formal suspect in a tax evasion and money laundering scandal. The princess risks a prison sentence if she is found guilty of investing public funds. Spain's royal family is increasingly mired in scandals and its popularity has dropped considerably. The Turkish government is continuing to purge police forces after a corruption investigation started last month into the fortunes amassed by members of government through the construction industry. 360 officers have been removed from their posts Tuesday. 16 were provincial police chiefs. Prime Minister Tayyip Erdogan has accused the police of abuse of office and said he will not allow political plotting. cold snap in the United States has reached new record lows. Half of the population in the U.S. are surviving temperatures of minus 35 degrees. From Minnesota to Georgia, temperature records are being shattered. The day-to-day -day lives of people have been deeply affected. Thousands of flights are cancelled and New York has seen a new century-old record for cold reached on Tuesday. Now take a second break. Welcome back. And before we end this edition of the news, a recap of our stories making headlines. Lawmakers scrutinizing the books and performance of public institutions and enterprises have given Gumworks a clean bill of health. The youngest daughter of the Spanish monarch, King Juan Carlos, is facing the prospect of going to jail. This as prosecutors launch a probe into alleged embezzling of public funds. The Turkish government has sacked an additional 360 police officers blamed for abuse of office and former U.S. Defense Secretary Robert Gates has accused President Barack Obama of losing hope in his policy on the war in Afghanistan. That was all in this edition of the news. Thanks for the pleasure of your company. Until then, I am Fatou Janembay and it's a good night from me.